Hi everyone, I'm Diana Sebsta, Director of Bereavement for the Joseph T. Quinlan Bereavement Center and Karen Ann Quinlan Hospice. And I wanna welcome you to Grief Matters, conversations about life and death. No subject is off limits and no topic is taboo. I wanna invite you to send in your questions about anything end of life, dying, death, and grief. Hi everybody. Welcome to episode two of Grief Matters. I'm Diana Sebsta, Director of Bereavement for the Joseph T. Quinlan Bereavement Center and Karen Ann Quinlan Hospice. Today I wanted to talk about how to get our feelings out, especially when it's about grief. And one of the things that made me think of this idea today was on Twitter, Good Grief App tweeted, Grieving is like breathing, but we act like we have to hold our breath says Dr. Shatavia Alexander-Thomas, a therapist. It's a natural process, and if you pretend like you don't have to do it or that it doesn't exist, you'll end up choking or passing out. And we talk about that all the time, the importance of getting our inside feelings out and how it can be like um, a volcano, um, a shaken bottle of soda. Um, Eventually, it's going to have to come out. And if we don't do it in um, healthy, smarter ways, it could be a mess. So some of the things I wanted to talk about was how to get some of those inside feelings out. And then we'll talk about why it's so important. But one of the things I wanted to say is that it's different for everybody. So I'm gonna give you a few different examples. For example, writing is a very, very good way to get our inside feelings out. A lot of people like to journal, but not everybody likes writing or enjoys it. So that might not be good for everybody, but it is good to get all of the inside feelings out because sometimes we have so many overwhelming feelings and grief. It feels like a tangled ball of yarn in our head. And when we're trying to untangle it, we don't know where the end is. We can't find it to know when to start, un- where to start untangling it. By writing, undirected writing, it can be very helpful to get all of that stuff out and to kind of see where all that tangled mess is and give you an idea of what are some of your um, prime issues or stressors that might be bothering you in grief. And another thing that I know in for journaling that's helpful in grief is that if we journal throughout our grief process, sometimes we get triggers along that process. And it makes us feel like we haven't gained any ground and that we're no better than we were when the loss first happened. So often I would encourage a client to go back into their journal and to read from their earlier entries and they are pleasantly surprised to find that indeed they have made some progress. It may not feel like it, but there are definite things that they can read that are concrete and factual that shows that they are going through um, changes for the positive. Okay, so that's journaling. Another thing we do is art. So any kind of expressive, creative activity is a great way to get our inside feelings out. It can give voice to something that we may not be able to verbalize ourselves. So one of the things that are very popular, especially with young people, is our adult coloring books. And the mandala ones are very popular because it's just intricate designs and you know, different things that you can see and you can use your own imagination to color it however you want and to do whatever you want. So a lot of times the clients would like to color it to express how they are feeling in grief in that moment, or they will express how they felt in the beginning of the loss and then how they felt as they're going through their grief process and then they can describe it through art. And there's so many different mediums in art. So there's, you know, um, pottery, uh, painting, um, and music is another one. So music is a beautiful way to express our feelings and grief, either as a musician or a songwriter. So we could use both of those avenues to help express those feelings but also just to listen to songs. There are some songs that resonate with us, the message that is being sung to us. Um, I love Switchfoot because they have two very big songs for me that um, help 
uh, my clients in grief, especially younger clients. Um, I Dare You to Move is one such song where the words literally are saying, I dare you to pick yourself up off the floor. I know it's painful. I know it's tough, but I want you to get strong and resilient and go ahead and do that. And then another one is, um, this is your life. This is your life. Are you, are you who you want to be? That's one of the lines in the song. That's beautiful. Because life is short, and those who have lost somebody, especially significant losses, know that we have no guarantees in life. We don't know how long we're going to live, and it's not just older people that die or people with a terminal disease. So this is your life. Are you who you want to be? Are you doing what you want to do right now, today? So music can be a wonderful um, form of creative expression. Another one is play. So adults can do this play and, and um, kids. It's very, very popular, of course, with the kids. Um, we tell them in our expressive arts for children, any kind of physical, physical activity is great. So whether you're riding your bike, if you're playing football, for the older kids, we talk about wrestling, we talk about kickboxing. Um, but for the younger kids, board games are awesome. And one of our most popular ones is called the coping skills game. And this is a great little board game. I'm trying to get it into the camera um, because it talks about how to use coping strategies to help with tough feelings. So um, it go, it's generalized for life, of course. So it's like if you're having issues in school, if you're having issues with your sibling or a friend, or if you're mad at your mom and dad, you know, it gives you great strategies to use. But I love that you can get the family involved in that because then the parents can see what kind of coping strategies they can remind their children of after the game is played. And then to be able to reinforce those coping strategies for any other life issues that will come along. So we've got, uh, and then reading. I knew I was gonna forget something. So a lot of people like to read. They like to get psychoeducational material about grief. They want to normalize, feel normalized about what their grieving process is. One of the best books I know um, to help normalize sudden loss as a widow or a widower is called The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. And she's a New York Times bestselling author. She's got many, many books out. Um, but this one was a very personal retrospective year's look into her first year of bereavement after her husband died of a heart attack in their apartment while she was cooking dinner. So it, it's very, um, it talks, you know, lay person language and normalizes some of the things that we might be going through in that first year of grief, missing them, um, trying to adjust to the reality that they're really gone, um, how we hold on to these magical ideas. In her case, it was, he always would come home from work and he would sit in a certain chair and he would put on these shoes that were underneath the chair. And so she kept those shoes there because then he would walk in through that door. Now, logically, she knew that he had died. She saw it. But from her heart, emotionally, the heart and the mind weren't meeting yet. And so she kept that magical thinking until at the year anniversary of his death, then she did a ritual to help herself move forward. So things like that are very helpful for people. I just took a call from a widower today who actually ordered three books about um, how to be a widower. And it basically was from other widowers giving tips on how to survive day to day. So that was a great way to do it. One of our most favorite popular books is called Healing After Loss. And this is a daily meditation book. It's not so much spiritual, although it does have, and I shouldn't say it's not so much religious, it does have more spiritual kind of tones to it. But a lot of our clients love this because they're short, simple readings that they can do um, first thing in the day, and they can reflect on the message throughout the day, kind of reminding themselves, grounding them um, in their day, especially if they get triggered. So this is super popular. So those are some things that we can do to get the inside feelings out. So the reason why those are important. We know that there's no way to avoid grief. If we do, it's just going to get us. It's, it's going to kick us in the butt when we least expect it. 
And a lot of times people feel blindsided by that. And it can come out in ways that we don't expect it to come out. A lot of times we're thinking grief, we're thinking emotion, it's gonna come out in tears or maybe anger. But people don't realize that it can actually come out in depression or anxiety or insomnia or um, you know, in appetence or um, ulcers or other illnesses because it does affect our body. Anytime we keep things bottled up inside, it has to come out in some way. And if we don't choose a healthy way, the body's gonna choose another way to get it out. So that's why we teach the kids you know, the shaken soda bottle or we'll do the volcano, you know, you explode, it's going to come out in some way and it's going to make a mess. So one of the things that I will also offer is that there's gender differences in how we express those feelings of grief. So female gendered individuals are much more emotive and they're much more comfortable talking about it and crying about it and sharing it with other people. Male gendered individuals aren't comfortable doing that. They're more comfortable doing more action-oriented types of things, fix-it-oriented types of actions. So you'll see them doing things like mowing the lawn or working out or playing sports or things like that. Neither one is better than the other. It's just a gender preference on how we um, deal with emotions. So it's the important thing is, is to pick something to do and to get those inside feelings out so that it doesn't fester and it doesn't come out in unhealthy ways. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to get contact us at the Bereavement Center. I still invite you all to send in your questions. I want this podcast to be for you, about you, to talk about anything about end of life, dying, death, and bereavement. So send those questions in and I'll see you at episode three.